Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. This is a new human experience podcast. Today is May the 27th, 2021. And the topic for this evening is the undiscovered self. This is the, the, the last um, week in May. And all of May, the topic has been really to know thyself. And so this this last week, I actually want to talk about really um, <clears throat> a, a little bit about everything. Um, it's, so what, what really inspired me to pick this topic is that um, despite the fact that, you know, I have, have been living in this body for, for a while now, let's, let's not um, <laughs> name number the years, name the number of years, but it's it's been a while. So, and we as a collective as well, and so it's not just me personally, as a collective, we've been living with these bodies for, for a while now. And um, we have been um, kind of probing, dissecting, and really studying ourselves for a while as well. However, still, our knowledge really of who we truly are, what these biology actually um, entails is just, we're still just scratching the, the, the surface. And it is not because we, we didn't try, because we have been, there's lots of science, scientists, all of these people that is trying to look into um, our body to really know about the, the the inner workings of the body and their philosophers from you know eons ago starting to ask the questions of you know who are we and there's been lots of discussions and different um understanding and evolving of our understanding of why we are here and and what is what are we doing here and um, and so, however, how come after all these years, what we know about ourselves is still so little? I think that's really a question that I've been asking, and I don't think it's because we are we are stupid or anything of that sort. Well, okay, who knows? Um, all is relative. Maybe relative to the the. Um, the cosmic level of intelligence, um, our intelligence as where we are right now, it's really very naive and, and King Descartes. So, but I think um, no small part of it is because we actually have been looking in the wrong direction or in, we're not approaching this the subject matter in the, the right frame of mind because we have been focusing a lot on our physical body, our, the, the, the biology. And we kind of, um, I think the scientific method is, is really to do with everything to measure what we can see, what we can touch. And that's, that's only a fraction of who we are. And, and of course, that's because I'm approaching this subject from the point of view of spirituality. And so our, my understanding from the point of view of spirituality is that this body, this body that we have is only a fraction of who we are. And if we just limit our study and understanding of who we are from this very our, our rather narrow point of um, narrow base, then we are actually limiting how we understand and see ourselves. I've been a student and also a teacher for spirituality for for a number of years now, and um, in my journey in in terms of studying and also learning, um, and learning how to teach as well, is that I over the years I'm actually convinced that I am more than this body. Maybe at one point I was 
not re I don't really believe this, that at some point I, in, in the past, I only maybe adopted it, the belief that I'm more than this body simply as, um, you know, some, something that someone told me and I'm just exploring that idea. Whereas now I, there's really no doubt in my mind that I am more than this body. Um, very recently, what, what really triggered all this, this um, is that very recently I, I took a course. Um, it, is, it is called the 12 layers of the DNA and it was put on by um, Lee Carroll and Monica Moriani. Um, so Lee Carroll is the, the, the person who channeled Cryon and um, the subject matter, the 12 layers of DNA, of course, is something that I definitely would want to learn more about, especially from Cryon, from a very different um, perspective. So, so, and I was definitely not disappointed at all. I think after I, 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 I took that class and I'm still reviewing it because the information there, it's something that um, this, it's so rich that it, it really deserves to be reviewed over and over again, at least until I get a better understanding. However, just, just from being on that class, I, I have this conviction and really understanding, a deeper understanding of just how sacred our body actually is. And um, the, I, th I think that the last five years, I've been really coming to terms with how the role that our body plays in terms of spirituality, whereas I would say if you asked me five years ago or 10 years ago, I would, um, what I, I tend to think of 10 years ago is that the body is something to be overcome so that I can get to the spirituality part of me. So there is this, <clears throat> I would say, disconnection from my body. And um, however, in recent years, I really, when I really get to, to work with my body more and, and get a better understanding of the, this, the, the connection between mind, body, and spirit, I really um, have a very different um, or, and a much deeper appreciation of the sacredness of the body itself. And, um, and the body is, in terms of DNA, is, um, so when scientists look at DNA, they, they see this, yes, there are, of course, many um, codons, I forgot how many millions and millions of, of these molecules that, make, that mix up our DNA. And there are definitely um, the genome project that is to to map the genome and trying to find out what which um, molecule or pairs of of um, um, molecules together would be able to turn on certain gene expression and turn off gene expression. However, what scientists can see can measure and can track is only a fraction of who we truly are and what we are capable of. It's because our, our DNA is not just static. It's not something static. It's not that it, when we are born with you know, this, this DNA, then the set of DNA, it's this set of gene expression, then that's it. Um, that's absolutely not the case at all. Our, our body, our DNA, our, our gene expression, all the physical part of parts of us is really based on and triggered by our consciousness. And actually, um, we think of when we see ourselves, we look at our body first. However, that is actually um, the opposite of who we truly are. 
who we truly are is actually spirit first, our con or I should say consciousness, awareness. Um, so our level of consciousness actually what our body is, is the, the, the physical manifestation of our consciousness, what is what we hold and what we are aware of in our mind. That's, that's how we, we manifest our body. So it is really who we are, our, our level of consciousness that, that creates the body. It's not the other way around. Even though the body does influence um, how our consciousness can grow, however, the the the, um, the order is actually the who we are as spirit, as a soul. Our consciousness manifests the body, and not the other way around. That's why when we when scientists um, approach looking at the body and trying to to understand our body we have this this backwards um well okay maybe backwards is not the right word for it that we have this this um incomplete understanding of our body and from the the from a lot of scientists point of view we have a, a big percentage of our DNA, uh, they called junk DNA, and actually nothing is junk. There's nothing that um, does not serve a purpose. It is just that, the, um, according to Cryon, who um, right now our DNA is only functioning at 30%. So which means that even if scientists can map the genome and know exactly all the gene expression, all the different combinations of gene expression and all, all the science can measure, track and experiment on. If we've done all of that to the best of our ability, all we know, all we can know about our full potential is only 30%. So that that is not even half of, of what we who we truly are and, and our, our, our potential. So that's how little we know about ourselves. And, um, okay. So according to Cryon, there are 12 layers of our DNA. And of course, I am not going to to talk about these 12 layers um, and, and try to summarize um, my what I've learned in the in the past you know, weekend just to paraphrase or um, any way in any way um, give you a summary of of the 12 layers of DNA it's this is not what this this is for um, I think what I actually want to to impress upon and and to share is really, our sacredness, and that we that we only know the tip of the iceberg of who we truly are, what we are capable of. Um, so we are only running at thirty percent. Even even um, giants like Elon Musk or or Tesla in the past they because of the level of consciousness it's like it's still only a fraction of what we are capable of doing who we are capable of being so that is this one of the things that i want to to um point out and the other thing is that it is just because we, we are at 30%, that does not mean that we are less than. It is simply that as a, um, a planet, as a whole, that's where we, where we are at in this moment. We are still ongoing and there's still so much more to come. The best is yet to come. And we are just 
at the threshold of another level of um, understanding who we truly are. And that's why this I, I picked this topic of know thyself um, for the month of May is because this, this year, and especially in the latter part of the year, we're going to have new energies coming in that's going to push us to start to um, be able to get a crack at the 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 rest of the seventy percent of our potential. It's a start. Um, it's uh, the the whole journey is going to take millions of years, and um, I may not be here, and a lot of the people who are listening to this right now may not be here in this body. However, our soul. Um, at least some of our souls would still be here for that whole journey to 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 go on um, along with Earth. What I can share right now is really my experience of of um, validating of some of the things that that Cryon talked about. So the first thing, um, or one of the things that Cryon talked about that's really stored within our DNA is our Akashic record. What is Akashic record? Akashic record is really all the lifetimes that each of our soul ha has lived on earth. So every time when our soul come back to earth, like not, not every soul, um, incarnates on earth all the time um, some souls only are here for a few lifetimes and some have been here since the beginning so it's it's really um there are a, a lot of different combinations however for each of the the the, the, the souls that come on earth we each have an carry an akashic record and we carry it within our DNA. So it means that we have access to it. Um, and there certainly are a number of times during my journey in the last 15, 20 years of, of raising my own awareness and consciousness that I have these spontaneous remembrance of uh, Akashic remembrance, I, I should say. And, and um, I remember the, f not the first one, um, maybe the second or third time I remember Akashic record was when I, I'm, I was, um, I was in Hawaii and I, I was learning um, Huna. So, and we are doing, so Huna is Hawaiian shamanism. So when I was learning Huna, um, we're doing some breath work, breathing exercise. And of course, breath work is, is the easy, one of the easiest way for us to shift our consciousness. And when I was in this group of, you know, all doing this, this um, breath work, I, like a, a vision just came to my mind as is, it's um, much as I was participating in the this initiation, this this breath work is part of an initiation. I actually remembered a, a pre a previous initiation that I did when I was um, the last time I was in, on um, Hawaii, uh, or Hawaii is actually um, according to Cryon. So so. It's something that has yet to be proven scientifically, but according to Cryon, um, Hawaii is really part of um, the old Lemuria, and so that's that's the the memory that came back to me was the when I was being initiated the, in during Lemurian time. So that was one of my uh, so memory, and and I remember there are other times when I was doing. Um, um, some healing and uh, at one other time I was doing healing with um, I think it was Sifu James facilitating a group of us doing some some energetic release and I just um, released a, a some emotions that came up during a lifetime when I was uh, I think I died of starvation and so so that's that's um, so that's what the 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 akashic record 
came up for me. So during these times of um, when I'm either doing initiation or being in, in meditation, um, whether, whether by myself or in a group setting, there are definitely has been quite a few times when these spontaneous Akashic memories would just come up. And I'm not saying this to, I'm not sharing this to say that, to, to kind of impress people that, you know, I'm special, I can remember my Akashic record, nothing of that sort. I'm just, from, from my understanding though, Akashic record is um, when you are ready. So when your soul know that you are ready, especially if you are trying to release something, some emotional, then, and you, you are at the, the, the consciousness level where when you remember these past experience, you wouldn't be um, at firstly affected because, you know, if, if I haven't done the release work, being, you know, dying of starvation could be a rather traumatic experience. So, so our soul doesn't just give us all these memories. To, so it's, it's actually, if our soul does that, if our body just, you know, when we, when we meet somebody and all of a sudden we remember that, oh, last time this person, um, they, they, they did something to me or I did something to them. Like it's, it's, it can be chaotic. It can really um, mess up your relationship life with other people when you when these akashic record memories come up and you're not at the the consciousness level where you can um, really take the the learning and let go of the emotional um, charge of it so that's why not everyone would be able to remember these akashic um, memories. That's why when we come, when, when we come, um, when we incarnate on earth, we don't remember, most of us anyways, there, there are obviously people that are uh, exceptional um, and they have their own um, uh, soul journeys to, to, to remember. However, most people don't remember any of these and it's, it's a blessing. Because if you are not ready to, to digest all of these past stories, then it can really mess up your, the, the way that you, your soul is guiding you to evolve in this lifetime. And um, however, we all carry these within our DNA. Part of our DNA is to store all of the lifetimes, all the things that we have learned and as the energy shifted, when we get into fifth dimension, then like this, this probably is the, um, like if, if your soul is going to move into fifth dimension, then, then this lifetime would be the last lifetime you would be incarnating on, on earth that um, has it that you don't remember. So the next time you come back, you will remember. You may not remember, you know, from day one, but you, but you know, once you you um, get, once you are here, at some point, very early on in your childhood, you would be able to remember what you've done before, or the things that you have learned, or the life lessons that you have learned before, and um, and also because of the change of energy, what we remember will not be the negative things as much because um, a lot of us are doing a lot of emotional purging. We are actually preparing ourselves so that the next time we come back, we are not just going to remember the bad stuff because most of the time when, when, um, when we remember, um, when we have Akashic memory, it, it's usually, you know, um, to remind us that oh okay we died because of this so so next time don't let's say if we drown then next time the when we come back we we don't remember the circumstances that we have drowned but we may still remember that we don't like water or we don't like um to like certain 
people or certain um, animals or certain insects like spiders or, or snakes and all those things. Those are, those are things that are in our um, Akashic record that we had a most likely had something, a bad experience. That's why even though we don't remember the specifics, but there are these um, phantom fears that can come up. So that's one way that we, we actually remember our Akashic record. And um, so in the new energy though, when we remember our Akashic record, because we have done a lot of the energy release and because of the new energy, what we remember, what we retain will mostly be the positive things that we have learned, like life lesson learned. And when we, even if we meet someone that we had some, um, I would say interesting um, relationships in previous lifetime, because of the change in energy, what we would be able to do is really see that other person as just another aspect of ourselves that is doing the best we can in, in, the, in less than ideal situations. So, so that's what something that we can look forward to is now that the energy is shifting, that, that our Akashic record will become much more available to us much earlier on. And um, it will be more of a natural part of us when we, when we come on earth again. And the other thing that I, I really feel, um, that really resonated with me about the, 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 the DNA is that even though our DNA, the, um, like it's, it's about the physical body, However, so much of our DNA is about the, the soul, which we, um, unless you, you are really more of a spiritual person, that you, we, we don't, we don't um, pay too much attention up until now. However, within our DNA, all of our soul energy, um, our soul signature, our soul name, connection to higher self, connection to the creator source itself. It's all within the DNA. And, and it's, it's like, it's out of the 12 layers, I think there are at least you know, more than half. That's all about that. And, um, and also connection to our soul family, connection to our soul guides. Actually, um, all of our, our um, guides is really a part of us because they came in there. They came in within our DNA energetically. So they're always trying to communicate with us, always trying to guide us whether we 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 want to or whether we are ready to listen to them or not that truly is our our free will choice and it's not right it's not wrong it is simply our choice we our free will choice to choose how much we want to um start to discover the spiritual side of us, the unseen side of us, and how much we still really want to simply explore the, 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 the physical part of ourselves. There is no right or wrong. It's, it's just that it's all guided by our soul. Our soul would just, you know, it could be many lifetimes that we, we've learned lessons and then one lifetime, it will start to switch on. And that's all fine from a soul level, from a spiritual level, there is no judgment of whether we, we 
want to work on raising our consciousness or simply party because as I understand is that our body is really the is as much a sacred part of us as the spirit part of us there is no such thing as a a dirty body or a a less than perfect body even though you know our judgment our judgmental mind may think that oh, okay i'm too too thin too big too tall too whatever and in 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 the eyes of spirit it's we are perfect no matter what we look like no matter how um young we are no matter how old we are no matter what skin color we have how much hair how much hair we don't have or how much how many teeth we don't have so it's it's all fine because we are spirit first and this this body is simply um a creation from the the un, uh, the non-visible part of us that's really another thing that I want to share is that um, for myself this it is really this journey of of starting to honor my body starting to have this much better relationship with my body and starting to to um, trust my body because I remember I was um, traveling uh, uh, abroad um, a couple of years ago, I did a lot of traveling, and there are people that I've I've met that I like. It's the first time I've ever met them. However, my body knew that I have met them before, and um, even though my conscious mind has no recollection of who they are, we don't even speak them. Um, the same language, I don't understand what they're saying most of the time, and we just conversing using Google Translate. Um, however, my body knows. So that's, that's really our DNA being um, sensitive enough that when we are uh, standing next to someone that we have met before, and there is this this the body has a knowledge that is just beyond what our our mind can comprehend so i think it's, it's because of enough of these these um experiences that i've come to to have a very um different understanding and and trust to my body and and also um a lot of it is also trusting my body is that when um, I, I do channeling so and and also a lot of um, different spirit entities come talk to me it it started uh, I guess maybe about 15 years ago and and at first it was just occasional um, occasional as in maybe once or twice a year and then uh, I think it started in, in 2013 onwards it's it's really very regular as in at least you know if I don't hear from from spirit at least once a month then then it's you know I would think that oh well okay what's going on how come <laughs> nobody is talking to me anymore it's it's like um, at times it's like every week and then I think lately it's uh, sometimes it's like every night I have you know you know different entities come talk to me and, and um, give me give me some message tell me they love me it's it was like the um, most of the entities oh, I, well actually all of the entities that I I well not all most of them the vast majority of the entities that come and and talk to me telepathically they uh, especially the ones that start with you know we love you you know that they they are of the 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 service to others vibration they are of the love vibration and those are the entities that you want to talk to that that is kind of safe to talk to so so over the years what i have um what i have come to 
to know and also confirmed by cryon um, from from just this this taking this um, class is that um, all of these the soul families the entities they are actually a part of me they are connect at the very least connected to my soul um, they are part of family and that's why they come when they come to me is there is this ease of communication i've never learned how to communicate with entities telepathically is not something that I you know took a course on um, unlike some of the other skills that I have which I, I worked on however you know tele telepathy is not something that I I took a class on it's just they just talked to me and I just underst I understood them so I never quite understand how 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 I did that however um, what I've noticed is that the first time I, I, a, an entity come to talk to me, that's because it's a new energy. I would really feel the full force of their energy. And, um, and, and I really do feel that their energy is so big. However, um, over a, um, over a course of, you know, sometimes a couple of, of um, sometimes it could be a couple of weeks, what I've, I've experienced is that the energy, when they come talk to me, it becomes so much more gentle because my body really know their energy already and, and their energy knows me. And so they don't have to, use as much um, force to to communicate with me and and also um, I think recent I think it's this maybe recently um, I actually got to the point where I can I know that I can tune in or, or adjust my own energy level um, to to be able to talk to just about anyone um, I remember whereas before I need to like I would wait for entities to come talk to me whereas now I've gotten the understanding and the knowing and and also the 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 confident energetically to know that all I need to do is simply think of which entity I want to talk to and and I would be able to connect with them even if it's somebody that I haven't um, talked to before, I can still connect with them. And, and it's, it's this intention. And so that really is like when, when I was um, talking to, when I was learning about the, the layers of DNA, like all these, it's really, it's not that I'm special. I'm not special. Anyone can do that. All it takes is practice, 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 practice. And anyone would be able to get there. It's just that, you know, I've had quite a number of years of practice already. So that's why for me, I was able to, at, you know, at this point now, I'm, I'm able to be able to just think of somebody and be able to connect with them. Of course, um, it depends on how... I would say it depends on how I, um, you know, what is my conscious, why do I want to connect with someone? Um, the, the more I want to connect with someone simply because of, um, I mean, out of love, out of the, the, the love of consciousness and raising my own spirituality, out of learning, then it is so easy for me to connect with that entity. If it's more um, of a more selfish nature where, oh, I want to get certain information, so I better, you know, contact these, these, um, and, and get information from these. It's, it's not that they don't care if, if I'm not, you know, doing it in, in terms of um, this. It is just that, um, it's something called the, the, 
it's called the law of free will is that there are certain knowledge when I'm if I'm not ready to receive them I would like it would actually throw me off my path rather than assist me so when you ask questions and you don't get the um when you try to connect with with um higher vibration entities you you want to ask questions and they don't answer you it's not because um you know you're not you're not high enough you're not pure enough nothing like that in in spirit's eyes you are perfect i am perfect you are perfect like that's who we are in in spirit's eyes because they they know that we are not this body they can they what who who they connect with is really our soul the divine part of us they don't connect with you know <laughs> this this human body this human body is simply a placeholder on earth so um however when we want to ask for inf certain information if we are not at the consciousness level where we can really make use and process the information that's being given it it's is um it can actually um, derail us rather than assist us so that so that's that's my understanding in terms of um reaching and and, and knowing things is that no to know, to know thyself, it's to know myself is really the only thing that is worth doing. To really get to know who I am and who you are, it's, it's really the only thing that is worth knowing. Um, from, from a spirit point of view, that's, and, um, and the universe has will spare no expense will spare no um energy to assist you in getting to know who you are and all you have to do is really ask and i don't mean just ask once because if you ask once um it depending on where you are in terms of consciousness just asking once may not be enough if that's it's something that you really want to know ask and ask again ask until you receive an answer that satisfy you and that is um that's my understanding because sometimes you may not be you you may ask for information that at that moment you can't comprehend yet or maybe you can't handle the truth yet and that's it is very possible because um sometimes we ask from an egoic point of view and um and what our ego wants to know and what truly our soul and our consciousness is ready to handle our two different things. So that is um, what I what I have learned and what really impressed on me when it comes to our DNA is that our, to, to sum up is that our DNA really is our is divinity. It's, it's the sacredness. Our body is actually sacred. And it, like, even if you look outside and you look at the most asleep person, um, when you look at them, is that they are still, no matter how asleep, how or even they may be somebody who is absolutely um, trying to serve themselves and to hell with everyone else, even those people, even those people, they are still sacred. They are still part of 
um, still part of source, still part of creation. There is no, um, there is really no, no bad people, I should say, in, in spirit's um, eyes, in spirit's eyes. And all the people that are, are choosing to serve themselves rather than service to others, that um, they may be able to cut off cut themselves off from their heart chakra, from love, from source love. However, they can never cut themselves off from source. And at some point, at some point, um, when, which, which point, how many millions of years from now, I don't know. That's their soul's choosing. At some point in their soul's journey, they will need to go back. They will need to make a, a soul choice. And at, at some point in the future, they will be able to make that soul choice to go back to oneness. So that's really the, the, the journey of souls. And it's all self-guided. It's all free will choice. So that really... And and just um just to think just to to one more thing to to uh, summarize about how to know ourselves is you choose you choose to know yourself and when you choose whenever that may be maybe this lifetime maybe ten lifetimes from now it's not. For me to know it's really your soul's choice when you your soul choose to know more of who you are know more of the divinity that is within you then um and you don't just choose it by by saying by just you know saying it once is you choose it from your heart and you choose it from your actions you sign up for courses like you know 12 layers of dna or you sign up for courses like meditation so th those are actions so the the more you take action the more you um ask within and also seek without the more you start to ask these questions to get to know yourself more, to get to know the, the truth of yourself, then all of heaven and earth will, will move to conspire to assist you in this, on this journey of getting to know yourself, getting to know more of the infinite potential to assist you in getting to 100% of what your DNA is actually capable of doing. So um, we still have 70% to go and I have no idea how many years or how many millions of years that's going to take for us to get to 100%. However, it all starts with just the, the desire to seek, the desire to know. And that is all I want to share with you this evening.